Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar To Go. The Bar To Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar To Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar To Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss who in bourbon should have their own TV show. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Tim Swyot, Katie Joyce, and Lenny Eckstein. Hey, gang, what's up? Hey, hello. How are we doing? Good, good. How are you guys? Everybody good? good? Excellent. Walking on sunshine. Walking on sunshine. Cool. Well, we've got a fun show today. We're going to be talking about TV and who from the bourbon world would be good on a television show. So it should be fun. So there's a lot of characters in in the world of bourbon. So it'll be fun to see who we pick and choose. But before we get to that, Tim said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, Tim? So I'm curious to see what used to be trashy, but now is considered classy these days. So I'm seeing a lot of trends come back. Was trashy, so, now classy. You know, yoga pants are spandex. Let's be honest. They're just all black now. And now creative colors. You're mm-hmm. seeing a lot of things swing back again. So what's considered trashy back in the day is now considered classy. Classy. Boy, that's a big turnaround. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot back? Of yes. I don't uh, know if classy? I the word classy, yeah. but socially acceptable. Okay. Yeah. Do you have that an really- example? Could fit in with hmm. classy, like something that you could slide in there and still be a classy person. If I get, no. like um, I honestly think the mullet, the mullet's having a moment again. Oh my god, yeah. it's a guy with one just in last 90s, night, early two thousands. If a guy had that, it's like, dude, go back to the eighties. What are you doing? Like late nineties, I should say. But the mullet, they're having a moment. The guys are permanent again. Like they're high school, early college guys. Yes. But they're definitely making them a thing again. Every yeah. like high school boy and like freshman in college right now, I swear has a mullet and it's driving me nuts. I hate it. It needs <laughs> to go it. away. Okay. Uh, what about uh, wallpaper? That seems to be making a comeback. And, oh, Ooh, who would have thought yeah. that? Yeah. Who would have thought that? It was just terrible, yeah. right? I'm, I'm trying to get some wallpaper down. I, I, we got this new shop and I, I spent uh, four hours and I got uh, a foot and a half partially removed. <laughs> 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 Two trips to the store uh, for different stuff, the regular than the professional grade. Nothing would come off. Yeah, I don't know it's what to different do. wallpaper, though. So I remember, like, your mom or your grandma's wallpaper was, like, white print, like, dainty little designs. Now it's bold. It's dark colors, and it's bold. I, I kind of like it. Like, I yeah, have a wallpaper room. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. People like that like yeah. it, though. Yeah. So I had... It, with wallpaper, I redid my office and it used to have wallpaper that my uh, dad put up in like 1993 and it still mm-hmm. was up there. So we took it down. I was redoing it and I was talking about doing wallpaper again because it's trendy again. I was like, this could look really nice in my office. And I went away for vacation for a week and I came back and all the walls were painted. And I was <laughs> like, what? And my mom goes, you're not doing wallpaper. It's painted. You're done. <laughs> You're done. Send someone who installed it all at one point yeah. in time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're done. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I've got a few uh, that come to mind. I never, I think that's a neat consideration. I never thought about things that were trashy and uh, now I've m- made their way back in. Um, I think uh, the El Camino. The El Camino. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there was, a, there was a stage where you're like, God, what a shitty car. But now, yeah. if I see one roll by, I'm like, that is badass. That's true. That's true. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, they've been around for a while, but trucker hats. 
trucker hats. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Those oh, are like, yeah. Classy though. Classy, though? I don't know about classy. Acceptable. Not classy, but acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Acceptable. And uh, here's a, here's a uh, topical one. I'm going to, you know, I might get some heat for this, but wild turkey. Wild turkey. Okay. Yeah. Brand. Yeah. I feel like for a while answer. when you showed up with wild turkey, yes. you're like, oh, God. But now you're no. that guy. Yeah. Now, oh, you're that guy. Yeah. 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 I got, I got one uh, that applies to all three gentlemen on this uh, call beards. I mean, yeah. I was, I'm old enough to know. I mean, there's times when no one had a beard and if you had a beard, that was oh. definitely not classy. That was considered trashy. And that now that's uh, a trend like that needs to stay. Yeah. yeah. Most guys have beards. I think. Yeah. So. yeah. Tattoos as well. Like, so it used to be, I, there, I see the True. memes that come through of like tattoos of, if someone used to have it, they were, you know, a biker, etc. Right. And right. now it's this is the chef who's made your right. like fancy chicken dish. That mm. yeah. yeah. But it's not to say that some people don't have trashy tattoos. Like you right. can tell a oh, good yeah. tattoo from a bad tattoo. Like you can tell, like, oh, you you paid a legit, you went to a studio, you had this done, or like, oh, you got that done in your cousin's kitchen. Like you can tell, like you know, mm-hmm. there's definitely <laughs> different. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. There's uh, some good. Tim, did you have anything on top? I of that? did have one, and I'm probably okay. gonna I'm probably gonna trigger a few people on this one. Well, okay. McNew, you, you brought up a good point. The the mullet is going to convert to the merm. If the merm comes back, oh, yeah. we know we're at the tail end of the world. Uh, <laughs> it, it's 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 coming. Uh, so mine is when I was reading this and trying to think of this on the like, charcuterie boards. Mm. Wow. That was yeah. a meat and cheese platter. At yeah. one point, I mean, you bring it to the family things. You just throw it all together. Now people yeah. try to class it up with uh, soft cheese and a hard cheese, and you have your different knives and everything like that. Now trying to make it easier, and I'm sure Mandy Kaplan's probably you know dry heaving right now when I talk about meat and cheese plates. Uh, <laughs> yet um, it, it's always been classy in Wisconsin, and uh, and it's just continuing to be out there. But I, I see all these pictures. People take pictures there. Look what I made. Now let that meat sweat. Let it sit out there for about two hours. Then I'll take care of it because that's what I used to eat when I was a kid. After all the adults came through and they were all drunk, you know, you got to get to it. <laughs> then you're, you're going to clean it up. But now yeah. that's classy again. It's like I don't get that. It is classy. Yeah. So I think that's really funny because like I will do one for every party, everything that we ever host. I'm like charcuterie board. I don't even do a veggie one. But my aunt in the '90s like didn't have her shit together, so she'd always just bring a tray like that. And my family gave her so much help. They were just like, "Janet, just even try today." And now we're just like, "It's a work of art." <laughs> Did anybody give a shit if it wasn't called charcuterie board? No, it I don't. It's like, lunchable. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants their lunchables again. It's a dumb lunchable. Yeah. yeah. Well, people get so creative. My, my oh, kids really listen. And, and Tim, you, you said you brought up some. So this is going to take us down a different uh, road here. So my kid is into this. And she's uh, like at work when they have something, she brings in the mm-hmm. charcuterie board. She's 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 got some different, uh, you know, trays and stuff like that and uh, different things. But apparently the one thing she didn't have was pickle forks. So she had borrowed ours. I don't even know. I don't use pickle forks. Uh, uh, but uh, she had apparently at one point borrowed ours and never gave them back. And she was out of town. She was in Paris uh, last week. And my uh, wife was watching her cat. And uh, we were out to dinner with her last night, actually, after she's been back and stuff like that, talking about the trip and all that. And her mother told her, hey, by the way, while I was over there, I grabbed back my pickle uh, forks. <laughs> and, and the cat said, you stole them from me? And uh, I was like, no, these are ours. And, uh, <laughs> and I don't think we really even use them. I don't even know. Why. I, I was like, why would you take them? Why do we care? I don't, we, we, we can borrow them from her if we need them. But uh, <laughs> So where do you guys stand I've on never this? Heard of the pickle fork. Was there was there a theft? Did a theft occur? So I, it only mirrors occurred. something. Honestly, uh, that, that honestly as somebody's child, I just feel like if it's my mom's, it's also mine. But it's the <laughs> person who takes it from my house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, possession is nine tenths of the law. Exactly. So we could go that way with the theft. However, yes. There, when she took it, there was the understanding of a borrowing because there was no yes. specific agreement as to gift and or sale. However, how long did she have it? How long uh, were the pickle forks with her? At least a year. At least a year. Oh, that's yeah, been a while. Over a year. I don't know. She Seen her plenty of times. Plenty of uh, opportunities to ask for them or yeah. adverse possession of the pickle forks. Yeah. Good. Would that verbal contract still show ownership of a borrow in there, even though there's nothing in writing? 
because if it's over it a year, it should be in writing. So yes, I feel like that's, the the that's the statute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I love having Katie around. <laughs> I, I love it. Katie's <laughs> lawyer logic. It's great. Yeah. Tim and McHugh. Tim and McHugh. No, I have a, a story uh, that, that I'd love to run by Katie here. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> it, it's been resolved, by the way, but uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll run it by her. Uh, what, what were you going to say, Tim? About? I was going to say, so now what you have to do is hide the pickle forks for another 360 some odd days, whatever it is, right. to basically <laughs> claim ownership back. That's right. So, <laughs> it's going to be like she steals them from your house yeah. and then she doesn't steal them from her house. Like it's going to yeah. be a back and forth pickle. As we record house. this, we'll be out of town tomorrow night. So, yeah, they, they could be going back. Yeah, they, they could be going be. back. Yeah, so, all right. Well, guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Lenny. Lenny needs a drink. He's busy yeah. on his projects. <laughs> um, to the week. Yeah. Oh. I've got a bottle of uh, Boulder bourbon. It's a store pick from uh, the vault at the Stanley Hotel. Okay. Okay. Uh, the the crack against the desk was louder than the pop, but it was audible. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to give him credit for the, the desk crack. But in my mind, I know exactly which was what. So uh, he's the lead, though. I did hear it. So Katie, are you ready? I am ready. So I have some Maker's Mark private selection. This is the Sugar Fire Reserve. Sugar Fire. Okay. Which uh story about that my brother brought it for me and i just got it tonight uh like sugar fire barbecue office. yeah sugar fire barbecue yeah. so yeah. they decided to start selling some of the bottles that they had left and my brother plays volleyball there and so he picked me up a bottle and i paid him for it and so he asked me if i got it to because he's dropped off in my office and my mom's like what did you give her and he was like, that's none of your business, mom. He's like, what, what did he do? Why did he need to give you something? I was like, that's none of your business, mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm the mom. Well, this, everything's my business. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's the wax. That was good. Okay. <laughs> winning. Okay. Okay, that was good. That was good. I, worth the wait. I don't know about that, but uh, definitely good enough to take the lead. Uh, I'll go next. I've got the old granddad bottled in bond. A uh, bottle that is more than halfway empty. I don't expect much here. Katie had a pretty good pop there. So let's see what I got. Nothing but a little base there. Not anywhere near enough to take the lead. Tim, you're next. Oh, with, uh, with Katie going with Sugar Fire, there definitely is the parental advisory notice on this podcast for today because that could have gone multiple different ways. I'm going to enjoy some Hickory Smoke Whiskey out of Deer Hammer. This is with the Steve Akeley label here. All right. So. Nothing, Tim. Tim. This is disappointing. Do you have anything on your end? Did the microphone just not pick it up? My microphone picks up nothing outside of my ridiculous yeah, voice. You need a new microphone. So, this is the trick. Yeah, yes. I went through like four of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. His his we'll blocks talk. out the, the the popping sounds for some reason. So it happens. So. You also have to change your audio settings to low for the background noise reduction. Thank you for that. Oh, well, he's <laughs> on it right now. I'm going to change it. All right. All right. Lenny always has an excuse, though. It's when he wins, the altitude has nothing to do with it. When he loses, it's just the altitude problem. So I wouldn't yeah. call it an excuse. I think I'm just looking for angles. <laughs> All right. <laughs> McDew, your last but not least. Kidding. What do you got? Katie has the lead. I have a backbone single barrel. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, not enough. Not enough. Katie wins it. So oh, there you go. Cheers, well, gang. Congrats, Katie. Ding. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about who from the world of bourbon deserves a TV show. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. 
It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staveandthief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Jim Fosnott, I'm your bourbon buddy, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about who from bourbon should have their own TV show. Yes, we are. What do we think? What do we want to throw out there for? Uh, my first thought was a show of fireside chats with Trey Zoller. Okay. I, feel I like thought especially- Trey, too. He was on my list. That's, there's many ways I think he could make a fantastic show, but especially I'm, I'm, my first instinct was like this show of just like kind of like a drunk history thing. Like you're just sitting talking about stuff, but like just a fireside chat with him. <laughs> he is an interesting guy, right? Uh, so much so, yeah, like, I don't think we could tell all the good stories. So. <laughs> I definitely don't remember meeting him, but I have. <laughs> McDo's kissed him. McNew kissed him. Now she was so drunk. First time day she ever met Trey. At the end of the night, she kisses him. Uh, and, and then, but she doesn't remember the next day. I was like, "How cool is that? You got to kiss Trey Zoller." And she's like, yeah. "No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did not." Probably, probably one of many. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but I think Trey would be cool in like a National Geographic way because he's always yeah. out fishing or. Can't By the way, it was cool. just a friendly kiss, like uh, yeah, yeah. You know, just thanks. Like it wasn't, it wasn't making up. I want to be clear. Yeah, yeah I'm, like, I'm, I'm like not sort of like the hello. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, but it was yeah, like a goodbye because we were leaving. We were leaving. Got we're leaving. it all. It was the uh, East Coast kiss, kiss. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah, yeah, I like that. I don't want to start. Well, so, yeah. so, no, it was nothing. Yeah, nothing salacious. There. No, but I think like a National Geographic thing where it's like he is out fishing and doing his adventurous things because he's always somewhere. And then yeah. Oh, yeah. follow him around for the day and then sit down with a whiskey and he can kind of like recap the day and why he was doing. He plays perfect. polo. He goes out deep sea stuff uh, with yeah. O-Search. I mean, there's all kinds of cool stuff he does. So, yeah. yeah, he's definitely got an interesting ready for TV life, I think. So, I yeah. Like yeah. Who else? Uh, Lenny, you were saying something. Well, who are you thinking? Uh, you know, like I was thinking about this question and I think there's a lot of like big personalities out of Kentucky uh, in the industry as it's most traditional but i was trying to think who in colorado would fit the bill and i don't know if any of you guys know him but uh you know a neighbor of ours just 30 minutes south uh pt wood of woods high mountain distillery Mm -hmm. um awesome distillery it's been around for quite a while uh him and his brother lee run the place but pt is like uh you know like a lot of times when we when the presidential cycles come up it's always a question of like would you want to get a beer with this guy well pt was just recently finished out his term as the mayor of Salida, Colorado. And, you know, in political oh. terms, he's definitely the guy you want to get a beer with. He's now running for a county commissioner and and, the, and he cool. owns a whiskey distillery and he's an avid whitewater rafter, uh, kayaker, mountain biker. And, and he uh, conceived of this whole notion for this distillery on a rafting trip down the Grand Canyon. So I could see a uh, sort of like follow along thing down the grand canyon maybe uh you know recapping the process yeah. thoughts okay. on it. oh he sounds perfect yeah, he's a good dude yeah he'd be awesome yeah that sign sounds like a good yeah sign him up mcdo has got one um i cannot think of his last name i'll apologize but aaron from smoke wagon dude is always driving some cool ass car into the desert oh my gosh yes the day that everybody wants to have i'd love to follow him around on camera <laughs> i could totally see him be like gas monkey garage style like yes. oh yeah. my gosh like, his instagram, well, chasing just so cars or something anyway yeah his even like his instagram videos are just the best like i'll just sit there and watch him so yeah i'm just like dude is living the life we all want he would be amazing to watch on a tv show lots okay. of turquoise Lots of turquoise. Yeah. We were when I was at Bourbon's Bistro the last time. 
a few weeks ago. We sat across, we were tables across from him. He was in Kentucky uh, buying barrels, I guess, doing something. So it was kind of fun watching him and people trying to walk up to him and everything like that. It, you, you know that personality when you see him. He's, he's a walking TV show. Yeah. He's just great. Yeah, yeah he is. So, he definitely has a look. Like, there's just a look about him that is yeah. interesting. So, yeah. He looks a little bit like Bronner. I mean, it would have yes. been a fun yeah. interaction. Yeah. That would have been good for the TV show. Bronner. <laughs> yeah, he's West Coast Bronner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so i've got a couple because i'm trying to think of what shows i because i don't watch a lot of tv or any of these shows i don't stream i don't do anything i'm too boring like once i get into something i can't get out of it next thing you know i wake up three days later and right. i don't know what happened um so i try not to stream and binge but i was thinking okay what would be something like the kardashians it'd be the licorices the licorice family licorice. you imagine following okay. that whole crew yeah. for a day oh, yeah. Yeah. and have episodes on that one all yeah. the interactions with them and everything like that and then it's like, what do you have, like a Hatfield and McCoys or something like that? Can you believe like uh, Leopold Brothers and anybody? The nicest yeah. people in the world, some of the tallest and burliest guys in the world making whiskey. And like it's somebody opposite. Just put them in a day and see what happens through that stuff. Um, and then it's like, okay, what do you do like a Below Deck Met? Because I did fall in love with that show. Any of the oh, Below Deck nice. series. How do you mix up some of that stuff? And can you imagine following the Neelys, watching all the shenanigans going on every day would be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, the Neelys would be amazing on show. The Neelys just uh, yeah, I need I need like five or six episodes, and then the, I think the last one that I have is uh, I'm a big fan of the show Suits. I'm going back into it again. I, I needed to get yeah. my uh, machismo back. That's a yeah, Katie knows that that attorney show is really good. I really enjoy that one. It's like who's that high drama? Who is that all that high drama? And you piece all these folks together. You take a distillo, let's say you go get the folks from Katakin Creek, you get somebody on the West Coast from Westland, you kind of piece them all together, and challenges or something like that throughout the time of, not whiskey challenges, but real life challenges, see how they all would interact. Because mm -hmm. you got all these entrepreneurs that are hungry in some shape or form, had a dream, made, made it something, and the, it's the staying power of some of these craft distillers. I mean, Lenny, you've been open for over 10 years. You know, some of the, the staying power in all this stuff is not easy, and I'd love to hear how they would look at modern day problems or working through challenges on things and seeing how you can relate that to real life and have lessons learned from that because there's a spirit there that you can't really replicate. You got to watch it. Yeah. I like it. That's a good concept. You should be a producer. I would watch <laughs> all of those. Like that's those fantastic. are all good. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do think Lenny should be in the mix if we're talking about TV oh, yeah. shows. I mean, he's an interesting guy. He does, goes out and does a lot of traveling by himself, motorcycle trips. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, he's got a family, so you can do that dynamic. Sometimes, sometimes focus on the family, sometimes the distillery, sometimes Lenny, sometimes Lenny's travels, sometimes his time in Maine, you know, sometimes his podcasting stuff. I, there's a lot of different things Lenny does. Sometimes he buys motorcycles when he shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Even Motivation of buying right the now. house in Maine. You know, yeah. the un the understories that are there to figure out what's going through Letty's brain. Yeah. It, could be good. it looks like you're in an interview room right now. It's like perfectly right. decorated with like barrels behind that's, you and the bottles we can see that it's already set right. up. My interior decor skills. Yeah. Yeah. So they always do those, you know, where they're talking. And that that's that would be the room where Lenny would do the talk and that then becomes uh you see the visuals yeah. and then that's where you see him doing the, the talk about what uh, what you're gonna be mm -hmm. seeing coming up in that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, maybe. McDo, you were raising your hand before. What uh, what was your other one? Yeah, so I feel like she kind of already does her own reality show on Sundays, Sundays with the Weavers. If you watch her stories, Vaughn Weaver, like she, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love her stories on Sundays. It's like her and her husband, and their family. I would love to have like a Weavers full time reality show. Yeah. And her like post of like a day at the distillery. Like she's like yes, a day. She yes. did one the other day. She took her mom to work and she was like, it's bring your mom to work date. And I was just like, and I watched it like two or three times. That's over. a show. Yeah. But, that should could yeah. be a whole show. Not just a little social media post. So yeah. 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 She does that. Uh, I guess she's getting ready to embark on a big crisscross country travel thing. I uh, don't represent the brand. I, I mean, all this stuff was, makes for a great show. So yeah. 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 Cool. I think we're missing we're the most important one head. though. Okay. The most important one is a, a the steve show the steve show yeah so yes very interesting <laughs> what is this akeley and beth burrows talking about beards and brims there you go Beth talking about hats if i could, if I could be on the show with beth burrows, beards. i would do it i would do it Tim yeah. seriously needs to be the producer for all of these <laughs> yeah yeah 
Yeah, that would be great. She would uh, she would bring up the fun part of it, and uh, yeah, then it would just be uh, you know us doing what we do in the bourbon world. So yeah, that'd be cool. Great. She could she could wear a beard, and you could wear a large brim hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beards, brims, and bourbon with Pinkley yeah. and Burrows. Yeah, look at that. There it is. There it is. There. Watch watch it this Sunday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> On the Discovery Channel. All right. Well, there you go. There's some ideas. Uh, there's certainly plenty more out there. This this, this industry um, needs some of that. But I don't know that people want to do it uh, just because the, the reality shows have such a sketchy component to it where they want to set things up. And, you know, if it was uh, there's the, there's enough real good stuff here that you wouldn't have to do that. If you got the right producer, uh, Tim, there you go. There's your calling. If you get the right producer and you put it together, I think there's there's something there's enough there to, to watch for sure. So there you go. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Tim, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on the corporate and private events page on abvnetwork.com or on Instagram at swyguy2112. All right, Katie. You can find me swallowing my whiskey. <laughs> um, and then you can go over to Instagram and find me at Katie Proof. All right, Mr. Lenny. You can find me and the rest of Deer Hammer on social media at Deer Hammer. On the webs at DeerHammer.com. You can also order our bottles from there, shipped to your door. And uh, you can come visit us in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. All right, McNew. I am on Instagram at McNewABV. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, though, is abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, podcasts, so much more, abvnetwork.com. And, of course, check out what we got going on over at the ABV Barrel Shop at abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. Fartis, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.